everyone, uh, K Kim here. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, today I want to focus on, um, you know, five charts. I have five charts I want to share with you. And there are five reasons why I think stock market is not going to crash uh, compared to so many crazy people out there that the stock market is going to crash. And I think, you know, well, I was watching the I was watching TV the other day, and, and, and you know, there's this cop and saying that to another he was like a detective saying that to another detective saying that well, isn't it prohibited to come to a conclusion without you know solid proof or evidence, right? And and I started thinking that's what so many people do in stock market is that we come to a conclusion we speculate it's okay to speculate it's okay to come to a you know certain agreement but you cannot conclude without a solid proof evidence solid proof or evidence right so when we look at S and P five hundred index we're kind of looking at weekly chart here and I'm gonna go down to a very basic of technical this is as basic as it's gonna get i mean if you're elementary in technical analysis this is what we're going to we're going to work with very basic of technical analysis again we're looking at the weekly chart here meaning each candle represents one week so one of the one of the one of the rule one of the law of technical analysis is what old support becomes new resistance or old resistance becomes new support right that's what we call pivot level right so uh, when we look at a primary term uptrend when we say primary term uptrend what we're saying is this this is a primary term uptrend meaning that it continues to cultivate higher lows and higher highs continue to respect this uptrend support level, right? That's what we call primary term uptrend. But when can we say that the primary term uptrend has been reversed? Because remember what we talked about on last, some of my last videos, the trend is assumed to be in effect until it gives us a clear signal that it has been reversed. So we can't just, you know, as they start going up here, oh, the market is gonna crash. We can't say that, oh, market is, we can't because we're still in a primary term uptrend. There'll be stupid thing to do, right? You're just guessing it. you're just going through the emotion nobody can call anything in the market and say it's gonna happen we need we're not gods we're not we're in we're, we're human being we need a proof right we need solid evidence to conclude that the market has been reversed so so looking at this chart we're gonna go into a very very this is as basic it's gonna get in technical analysis so you just gonna draw this just very very simple line here. That's what we call rising support level, right? So you can see that support is continued to get respected, meaning there's a buyers in that vicinity. And so many people ask me, well, why does support level continue to work? It, it's just, it doesn't work. It works not because everybody is looking at the support level. Everybody's drawing the support level because. Matter of fact, most people do not look at the chart. They don't have a sophisticated chart system. What they do is most people trade off of emotion, instinct, meaning, well, at last time when we see us, when we saw a certain pullback and I bought it up and then I made some money. Or some people trying to short it here and they got burned. That's that's why the support level continues to work. Because remember, if you think about your childhood or your, your past history, right? You don't really remember the normal days, but you remember a pivotal moment when you're very, very happy or when you're very, very angry. Do you right? You remember those times. Same with the traders and investors. They remember when they were very, very happy because they bought it here. Or they remember when they're very, very angry because they're trying to sell it here, calling a market crash. Then they're trying to sell it and they got burned. So what happens is when people, when, when, when the market starts to see a pullback, these, those people who remember, because they remember, either they were happy, that's why they remember, because they made tons of money in the past, or they got burned very badly, so they remember. So they're gonna either change their strategy or something, right? So that's what we call pivot level. That's the reason why these support levels work. And also, what these support levels do is that this is a wind. Wind is blowing to the upside. As long as we stay in this course, what we're saying is the trend is going up until it breaks that level. Do you know what I'm saying here? Okay, so I'm just giving you just a little quick education and lesson on the basic of technical analysis, right? So well, when can we say the market has been fully reversed? Well, 
what back in 2000 2001 what we saw is these things started getting up and then we pull you know we we we, we taint right and we broke right through this what we call rising uptrend support this blue line here right and then it got back up and retested that line that's what we call rejection and then so in that process old support became new resistance do you see it now and then this thing tanked some more. And in that process, we continue to cultivate what? Downtrend resistance, and we continue to uh, create lower highs and lower lows, meaning we're on a downtrend. Same thing happened in 2008. We got rising uptrend support here. We got supported here, and here, and here. Do you see that long wick? And there. So we had a final, final jump, and then we pushed right through it, right? We got, we, we broke right through that, Right, so that rising uptrend support was broken. Again, sometimes you see a lot of shenanigans, a lot of like traps and bear traps, all that. So what's gonna happen is that breaking below this level is not enough. What you wanna see is it once it breaks below that rising uptrend support, you wanna see this thing getting back up and retested that level so then it can be act as resistance, right? So you wanna see a new resistance. That's very, very important if you're looking. Again, this this works in a smaller scale, daily chart, weekly chart, monthly chart, or you can even look at your you know intraday charts, but we're looking at a weekly chart now. We're looking at about you know 20 years worth of data here. Okay, so we're looking at 2000 crash, 1998 crash, and because so many people are telling me, not telling me, but so many people are shouting that 2016, 2015 is a lot like 2008 and 2000. It does not. As far as the technical is concerned, 2016 does not look anything like 2008 or 2000. And going, going into 2015 and 2016, what do we see? We are still in this primary term uptrend vicinity and we have bounced off of it do you see this and i've been talking i've been writing blog about this since late last year so this isn't something that i just come across oh my gosh like i just found this out we're just gonna no i go back to it. go to two tradersclub.com and then go into my articles and find the article saying the uptrend's not dead or, or uh, there's this uh, article that I uh, wrote, uh, one final, one last fight from the buyers. And I wrote that article down here when everything looked very gloomy. Again, I'm not trying to say that I called it, I named it. No, not that. I'm just, I just wanted to give benefit of doubt to the buyers in the primary term for the fact that we're still in the vicinity. We have not yet broken this rising uptrend support do you understand what i'm saying here so you can see that uptrend support here 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 is still getting respected what does that mean we're still in a primary term uptrend the trend is assumed to be in effect is to be assumed to be in effect until it gives us a clear signal that it has been reversed we do not have a clear signal as of today it, if you wanted to see this thing tank, what you what we should have seen is this: this thing blowing right through it, going right back up, hitting that old support level, and then gets rejected, right? And that will be new resistance, and we could even draw right this resistance through it. And in that process, we will cultivate lower highs and lower lows. Remember, look at the angle of these things. That's a fierce bears bring this thing down with that lower high. You see that low high, lower high, and lower high. Do you see a lower high here? No, we don't. If anything, we're seeing equal highs and moving sideways. But we do not see this fierceful wrath that's coming from the bears and just bring this thing down. You see that lower highs here how fast this thing came down and how how well it's holding up. It's completely different sentiment. I hate it when all these stupid chartists and all these stupid people, they think they know technical analysis and say, well, 2015 looks a lot like 2008, 2000. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Let's go to chart number two, reason two, all right? So this is a reason two. And so what you see here is a weekly, this is a weekly chart, it's the same chart, I just have these moving averages, 100 SMA meaning it's 100 simple moving average. 
Okay, so if you're gonna put this on your chart, you just go on your weekly chart, S&P 500 index, and you put out 100 SMA, simple moving average, right? Simple moving average. So the blue is 100 SMA, and then the, the pink is 200 SMA. So we're just gonna look at the sentiment. We just looked at price action sentiment. We drew that rising uptrend support. We understood that all support become new resistance. Well, same thing really happens with this what, weekly 100 SMA. You see the weekly 100 SMA going up? It acted support here, and then it kind of acted support here, here, and here, right? Slightly, right? And then what happened? What happened? It was acting as support. It was rising higher, meaning uptrend is still valid, right? It's valid, and then it started turning. It started to turn. It flipped side. It flips. It switched. It changed its team. It is no longer supporting the buyers. It is supporting the bears. You see that right there. So what happened? It blew right through it, got back up, retested it, and then rejected. That's very, very important. Remember, same thing happened with the uptrend support. Now with the weekly 100 SMA, that's what's happening. So now old support is becoming new resistance. Do you see this? In that process, we are cultivating what? Lower highs and downtrend resistance, okay? And next step was what? The weekly 200 SMA and the weekly 100 SMA, that's what we call death cross, right? Death cross. That's a huge warning signal. I mean, once you see that, that means the trend, its sentiment has reversed. Remember what we talked about? Trend is assumed to be an effect until it gives us a clear signal that it has reversed, right? That's a that's a pretty clear. Some of these signals are pretty clear signals. That's a good signals. So trend is not assumed to be an effect. At this time, trend is not assumed to be an effect. Same thing happened here. That hundred SMA coming down. This is 2005, 2016, all the way to 2007 and eight. Uptrend support, support, support going up. Another support here. We blew right through it, got back up, retested it, and got rejected. At this point, what do we say? The trend is not assumed to be in effect. Trend is not assumed to be in effect at this point. Because we have a clear signal that it has been reversed. And then we saw that weekly that, that 100 SMA, 200 SMA crossing to the downside. You run it. That's a huge warning signal that the primary to uptrend is done. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? We blew through it. And then what happened in that process? Downtrend resistance, lower highs. Lower highs. Very, very severe. Look at the angle of this thing. Lower highs. Let's look at today. This is today. Okay? This is today. First of all, 100 SMA started acting as support, 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 support. And here's important part. We acted as support here also. We blew through it, okay? We blew through it. Just like here, we blew through it right here and right here. So that was a warning signal. We blew through it. We came down to 200 SMA. We bounced up. But the difference is this. Back in 2000, 2001, that 100 SMA now supported the bears. And then this thing, we got, it was repudiated, it was an impediment for the buyers, right? It was rejected, and then price fell. Do you remember that? Back in 2008, blew through it, got back up, rejected at the 100 SMA, 100 SMA moving sideways, got rejected, and then price fell hard. What happened today is incredibly different. We fell below 100 SMA. So if this if this would have looked more like 2008 and 2000, you know, 2008 and 2000, what we should have seen coming down, going up, and the 100 SMA flattening out, getting rejected, and price falling. That's what you we should have seen if. This sentiment, this moving average sentiment is gonna look a lot like back in 2008 and 2000. Instead, what we saw was we got back up, putting equal highs, not lower highs, equal highs, and then falling, coming back down and retesting it as support. Do you see this? And then bouncing back 
up at that Honduras SMA. So Honduras SMA did not switch teams. Honduras SMA did not become a bear supporting moving average. Instead, we had a little bit of trouble here, but it was faithful and now we're pushing, moving high. We bounced off of again. And so the Honduras SMA is actually now acting as support, not resistance. Does that make sense to you guys? Do you see things a little bit clearly now, right? 100 SMA, 200 SMA crossing. Do we even, I mean, these guys are so far off par since here. We haven't even gotten close to it. They're still rising higher. 200 SMA is still kind of rising higher a little bit. What does that mean? We're still in a primary term uptrend. How many times do I have to tell you? We're still in a primary term uptrend. The trend is assumed to be in effect until it gives us a clear signal that it hasn't reversed. We do not have a clear signal as of today that it has been reversed. If anything, that 100 SMA is acting as a great support at this time. It is a different beast we're working with. We're not seeing this, this monster, this bearish monster. We're seeing this this guy, this 100 SMA is still supporting the buyers. It's being faithful. It's been faithful here, 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 and it's been faithful recently, just the last few weeks. All right, let's go to reason three. This is now we're looking at Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, this is a weekly chart also, so each candles represent one week. We're just looking at about eight years of worth of data here, eight to nine years, about 2008, 2007, all the way to 2016 today. So about eight years of worth of data. And what I'm analyzing in this chart is this. We're looking at more like an intermediate term, higher lows and higher highs. This is a very, very important because there are certain characteristics uh, before the, the market uh, inaugurates uh, downtrend, right? So you can see when we go back to 2008 crash right here, looking at this weekly chart of Dow Jones industry. Again, we're looking at Dow Jones now. Remember last two uh, charts, we've been looking at S&P 500 index. Now we're looking at Dow Jones industrial average index, right? So you can see we have this downtrend resistance and we have a lower highs and lower lows. Do you see what I'm saying? That's a downtrend. We saw something similar in that perspective back in late 2011, early 2012. What it looked like, what it looked like it was gonna be a lower highs and lower lows. What it looked like. I I was trading at that point and I was I was into I was I was taking uh, paying attention to what people are saying and you know stock uh, you know uh, stock tweets and Twitter and blogs and news and everything. There's people shenanigan people coming out and saying that this thing is going to like six thousand. No, I mean there are people coming on TV and saying these things. Some maybe some prominent people. There are people tweeting, shouting things, all kinds of things. There's going to be market crash and all kinds of all kinds of stuff. I've heard all kinds of things here, but only the technical analysis or the price action tells us the truth everybody else lies you're in, you lie i lie everyone lies because of because we're greedy because we're emotion driven where we have feelings we're, we're we're you know we're impulsive you know what i'm saying maybe we're having bad day today whatever it is we lie so we can benefit do you guys know what i'm saying the price section never lie this is this is a reason why just get rid of all the people saying get rid of news get rid of all the people saying all kinds of shenanigans look at the price section study the price and see what they're telling you Obviously, there anything can happen. It's live. It's market. Nothing is hundred percent guaranteed in the stock market. At least you have edge. At least you know what's the high probability outcome might be, right? So anyway, looking at this here, Dow Jones Industrial Average Weekly Chart, you can see that higher highs started cultivating. So once we got the higher high and higher low was cultivated, and there were people saying all kinds of stuff, just like today. And then what happened? We kept doing it. We kept doing it ever since. And then since then, we had about four years of prosperity in stock market, a bullish. And this whole time when the market was running, there was somebody somewhere calling the crash the whole time, the whole time. Can you believe that? So today, what ha what's happening today in 2000, late 2015, 2016 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average? Well, last week, right there, first of all, difference here, is that this downtrend resistance kept getting respected as a resistance. 
It's a resistance, it's a resistance. We hit that, we sell. We hit that, we, we it's sold, right? There's sellers here, a fierce sellers. Well, here, we clear that level while cultivating the higher lows and higher highs, right? Can we say that at this point that we, that we have a clear signal that the uh, market has been reversed to the upside after cultivating higher highs, higher lows? Yeah. Can we say that here we don't have a clear signal that it has been reversed, but we have a clear signal that trend is going to continue? Yeah. You see? So stop just calling things, you know what I mean, like a baby. Just look at the price section, study the price section, and, and come to a logical conclusion. And, and the, you know, so when, when the market started coming up and down here, this is we've already cultivated kind of well cult. We, we already inaugurated it, the uptrend, intermediate term uptrend. And once this happened, even though we saw pullback, this low was higher than this low, meaning we're in a, we're in a, this uptrend phase, right? We're no longer it's downtrend phase. We're that's that's kind of what's happening here on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We got that higher high. Right, we got this higher low for the first time, and we have this early signals that we're trying. The buyers are trying to cultivate the intermediate time uptrend. Does that make sense? Let's go. Reason four. This is again Dow Jones Industrial Average weekly chart. Um, we're looking at some oscillators here. We got MACD and RSI. This is what I call. This is what we call bullish uh, bullish divergence. Right, bullish divergence. What is bullish divergence? Bullish divergence again is when the price action um, creates a lower low, the oscillators creates higher high. In meaning, this was the one last push from the bears. Bears just it lost steam. You know, it it just it didn't have any more strength left, but it just pushed the one last time. And in that process, when the buyers came in, that's what I call clandestine buyers. These guys are value buyers. They these guys come in and create bottoms, right? And a lot of times these guys are not always long term, but once these guys start to buying it up and the public participation starts to happen. Then these guys will hold through, maybe even add more, and that's when the phenomenon happens, when the trend gets established, right? So you can see right there, lower low, higher lows. Same thing happened here. I mean, it happened every single time, and market reversed every single time. And that's exactly what was happening in Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you know what? We all know just because it happened in the past, okay, it doesn't mean just because it happened in the past, it's going to happen here. No, it doesn't mean that. No, I never said that. Did I ever say that, you know, you say it happened before, so it's going to happen? No, I'm saying there's a great chance. There's a great chance. You know what I'm saying? There's a great chance it could continue higher, given the fact that I've given you reason one, reason two, reason three, one, reason four. We're on a chart four right now. So these are evidences that I'm giving you guys, right? So that's a good sign there. Uh, let's go to reason five. This is a transportation average, right? Dow Jones transportation average. We're looking at monthly chart, meaning each candle represent, candles represent one month, okay? This is a one month. So, so many people talk about how, well, the Dow Jones industrial average, well, Dow Jones transportation average is not confirming the Dow Jones industrial average. That's true. One of the Dow theories suggests that Dow Jones transportation average must confirm Dow Jones industrial average. While the Dow Jones industrial average is up here somewhere, Dow Jones transportation average is down here. So they're not really fully confirming. But that's just a one data. Are you going to conclude out of because of the one data, you're just going to conclude the whole market is going to crash? You can't do that. There are other data we have to keep that in mind. We have to account it. Other data that we have, to, we have to be account. It has to be accounted for. We have to put all these data together. But looking at the Dow Jones transportation average, we're still in a primary term uptrend. Why? First of all, very basic. This, remember the chart one. Chart one. We talked about. We're still in a primary term uptrend on the Dow Jones Industrial or Transportation Average on this monthly chart. We're still in a primary term uptrend. Let's get that out of the way. We're still in the vicinity of primary term uptrend, meaning we're still cultivating higher lows and higher highs, and we bounced off of that primary term uptrend support. Okay, remember we talked about that. Okay, so second is this: what we have, what we have a stochastic here, and uh, this oscillator. When you use a monthly chart, it's, it's, it's a good tool for calling major bottoms and tops. 
In this chart, I want to show you that this is oversold status. Okay. So when we bought, when we cross, this is what we call bullish cross. You can see how many for years we had a bullish run, another year's a bullish run, we had another year's a bullish run. We're back at it. And we're, we have crossed already. Am I saying just because we have this signal that, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's just going to continue? No, I didn't say that. I'm saying there's a good chance. There's a great chance. There's a high chance that the market is going to continue higher for the fact that I've given you other evidences that market will continue higher. I'm, I did, I, what I didn't say is market will continue higher mark my words it's going to go to a certain price at a certain time or in in you know you know in certain time of frame because nobody knows what i'm saying because of these evidences i have presented to you there's a great chance that the market could continue higher hope you guys understand what i'm trying to say here because there are people out there calling all kinds of shenanigans and it's just crazy what people will do to make the bit, you know, take their name, you know, put their name out there. Anyway, so, uh, so, and you could say, well, okay, last time here in 2000, we, you know, we came down here and then we, we bought them, but the market really didn't continue higher, right? You're right, but market really never continued lower neither. We actually kind of moved sideways for a little bit and then the stochastic came back down and continued higher. So as far as a probability is concerned with this kind of, and plus in this time when this thing came down, we're actually kind of still in this kind of like, you know, like this sideways, almost like a falling channel type of action. But here's a different sentiment, right? We're in a rising primary term uptrend vicinity and sentiment. As of today, the trend is assumed to be in effect because we do not have a clear signal that this primary term, primary term uptrend has been reversed on the Dow Jones transportation average. Keep in mind, when I say primary term, I'm talking about this, okay? I'm talking about big uptrend. That's what we're talking about here, all right? So given the fact, so I that's, that's a chart five. So I, get, I just gave you this, chart one, right? The uptrends, old support becoming new resistance, but here we're still in the primary term uptrend without signal that it has been reversed. Remember, we talked about this chart two, weekly 100s and weekly 200s, and we have weekly 100s, we flip and became a, became a bear, supporting bears, flip side, and we saw tank gauge, right? In 2000, in 2008, but today we're actually seeing the tundra SMA continue rising and so still supporting the buyers and weekly 200 SMA, weekly 100 SMA, the death cross, we don't even see, we're not, we're not seeing anything near that happening right now. So we're, we're not anything like 2008 or 2000. That's what we're saying here with the moving averages. And I'm just recapping here. Uh, remember the chart three, Dow Jones Industrial Average weekly charge, lower highs, lower lows. You can see downtrend resistance tanked, but after when you start to cultivate higher lows and higher highs, and after clearing this resistance, market resumed back up. That's the sentiment we're seeing today. We clear this resistance. We're creating higher lows, and higher others might be early inauguration of, uh, you know, uh, uptrend, a minor or intermediate term uptrend there. Uh, chart four, we talked about, you know, this weekly chart, Dow Jones Industrial Average, bullish divergence, right? It happened here, 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 and every time it happens, uh, market seems to resume back up. So there's a great chance that it could continue higher as well. Reason five, transportation came down a lot, yet we're still in a primary term uptrend support, you know, supporting these levels, and stochastic calling, saying that this might be bottom, we're back at the oversold status, and then now it's ready to gap back up, and there's a good chance it could continue higher for the fact that we're still in a primary term uptrend vicinity. That makes sense. So, I have two more charts here on gold. Uh, this is gold share GLD. Um, we are we were on this falling channel, right? And we broke. It, look, it appeared to be we broke out of that in early April or so, and then we fell right back in. That's what we call a trap, a bull trap, a head fake, a shenanigan. And he thinks to make things worse, we have bearish divergence. Do you remember we've been talking about that bullish divergence? Do you remember this? Do you remember this? Bullish divergence, how they're pretty effective. Well, we have bearish divergence on gold. Made higher high is making lower high on this MACD oscillator. 
and then that was fake breakout. And so that's a bad sign. If we lose this resistance here, I mean, next resistance maybe somewhere here, and then probably just tankage. I mean, we're still in this downtrend. We're still in this primary time downtrend, guys. I mean, lower highs, lower lows. So that's a that's a that's a warning signal. I think if we you know if this thing break below this level, retest and get rejected, that thing could really come back down here. Uh, this is another chart. This is again, the, we're looking at daily chart. This one is daily chart, right? So this was daily chart of spider gold. Uh, each candle represents one day. Now I want to go into, this is the last chart I have for you guys. And I'll end this video. This is a weekly chart of gold shares. Do you remember we just talked about Dow Jones transportation average being at oversell, oversold status, how he bounced, right? You remember that we just talked about that? Well, let's go to gold on the weekly chart. Same oscillator here. We're on an overbought status. Last time when we're overbought status, this thing when when this oscillator came down, this thing, you know, came down pretty hard, and then it came back up to the oversold status. We tanked. We came back up to overbought status. I mean, overbought status. We tanked pretty hard, and then we came came went back up to overbought status. Tanked again. And uh, we're back at it. And this time, actually, it's making things much, much worse because we have bearish divergence on this weekly oscillators when we hit that overbought status and falling over. And that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. So I think... The equities, the stock market will continue higher. Uh, giving you five reasons why I think market is not going to crash but continue higher. But I think the gold price might continue lower here. These uh, clues and these evidences I've shown you. And so, again, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I uh, look at the market next couple of days, first couple of weeks or so. If I can, I'll come out with uh, with another video. But uh, uh, please subscribe and uh, please let me know if you have any questions and please don't ask me some stupid questions and don't 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 expose yourself with not stupid questions but don't expose yourself by saying dumb things on my comment section please you know like oh you know like oh you're wrong mister oh what are you smoking i mean it's I, that's that's all you can say that's how that's all you can say seriously like seriously be let's be more constructive here i i given you I just spent 32 minutes to give you constructive, solid analysis, giving you evidence. There's, there was there, none of these analysis was my emotion or my feelings. It's, it was solid data. It is a tangible data I've given you. So if you want to say something to me, just please be, be constructive. It's something that we can discuss about. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just, man, just level of people nowadays. Uh, just looking at the market is just crazy. Anyway, have a great night. Talk to you guys next time.